help navigate the sea of over 415 different board games and accessories that were released and restocked this month, We've compiled this list of our top picks and suggestions, some best bets, and a few wild cards, including a sequel to a game that was first released 11 years ago, which I've been looking forward to for months. This is your Board Game Buyer's Guide. I'm Chaz Marler with Watch It Played, and each month a brand new batch of board games inevitably catches our eye, and this month is no exception. So let's start with several eye-catching new releases and restocks, such as Spectre, the board game, in which various James Bond villains compete with one another to rise to the top of the nefarious Spectre organization. Whether you're in the business of being bad for wealth, power, or your aspirations are more philosophical, each villain in the game has their own plot inspired by one of the films, as they assemble devices, spy on their opponents, blackmail rivals while building a criminal empire, and strategically deploy agents around the globe to enact various schemes. Because why should heroes have all the fun? And while you're exploring your darker side, you may also want to take a look at the Escape the Dark Sector Collector's Box, which contains everything from the game's original 2020 release, plus its three expansions and new content for this cooperative role-playing storytelling game with push-your-luck elements in it. If you missed Escape the Dark Sector the first time it came around, well, then this compilation also adds new start cards, equipment, weapons, dice, trackers, and bosses to defeat. There is a lot of stuff to see, do, and encounter in this box, which may make this a good opportunity to bring this dark game to light. Or, for a cooperative dungeon-crawling adventure that's somewhat lighter, both figuratively and literally, on its own accord, there's Forgotten Depths, a 1-3 to three player adventure that combines tile laying and card play as hardy explorers weave their way to the bottom of a dungeon in order to destroy the powerful entity that resides there. Apparently, there's a DMV at the bottom of the dungeon. The gameplay alternates between exploring and encountering. First, players create the layout of the level as they play, then choose when and where to encounter the elements that they discover. With three different dungeon types, dozens of different monsters, dungeon features, and boss configurations, and rare legendary locations to discover, Forgotten Depth strives to offer players variety and replayability. What if an adventuring party isn't available and it's just you sitting there playing games? Well, in that case, Warp's Edge has got you covered with a single-player space battle adventure where a rookie pilot in the Outer Rim finds themselves stranded far away from their fleet after a crucial battle. Now, with resources running low, they must make one more valiant clash against the enemy fleet in order to fight their way to the warp gate that could be their ticket home. Warp's Edge utilizes cards, deck, and bag building mechanisms to introduce a scenario in which the plucky pilot will need to meticulously manage their resources if they have any hope to master their journey through space in time. Or, if for those who'd rather just cut straight to mastering space-time, there's the second edition of the Doctor Who RPG. Favorite segue in the entire episode, right there. The recently revamped and re-released core book includes complete character creation rules for concocting companions for the Doctor, time agents, investigators, or even an entirely new Time Lord of your own creation. This second edition, while still being compatible with the first edition, is intended to make gameplay faster, easier, and quicker to learn, while still creating an environment that feels like living in a Doctor Who episode. And if you're wondering who helped make this episode that you're living through right now possible, well, then wonder no longer, because it's sponsored in part by Marvel Gallery Prints from Upper Deck. Oh yes, upgrade your gaming space with Marvel Gallery Prints from Upper Deck. Founded in 2015, the Upper Deck Gallery is a portfolio of premium, limited edition prints that feature all original art of fan-favorite comic and movie characters. 
You know that one character from that one movie that nobody remembers? Well, they're not in this portfolio because these prints feature all-time fan favorite comic book and movie characters. Furthermore, all releases are limited edition, one-time print runs of original works of art printed on premium paper using a silkscreen or four-color lithograph process. And some prints, like this Infinity Gauntlet series, are produced with a unique foil board effect which makes them an eye-catcher all their own. Most prints include two releases, one regular version numbered 1 to 250, and one variant parallel version numbered 7 to 100. Just kidding, it's, it's 1 to 100, but the, the point is, it's less. Each print is only available until its supplies run out, so follow the link in this video's description to UpperDeckGallery.com and upgrade your gaming space with Marvel Gallery prints today! And now, let's continue on with games that not only caught my eye this month, but also made their way onto my own personal wish list. Several different games had me contemplating the old add to cart button this month, starting with Long Live the King, a game of secrecy and subterfuge, a strategic card game with secret identities, deception, and murder for four to eight players condensed into a fast playing portable card game. Each game, two of the players will be either the king or the assassin, while everyone else's roles are randomized. As a result, everyone has their own secret unique win condition, which they'll accumulate resources to achieve, while also sabotaging others, stealing cards, making trades, and forming alliances. I am really intrigued to see how much punch this paranoid little pint-sized package delivers. But in contrast to big ideas and small boxes, we also have small heroes in a big box with the dwarves Big Box, a cooperative dice rolling war game for two to six players, which combines the original game from 2012, along with five expansions, all together in one epic experience. The game consists of various scenarios in which the diligent dwarves must wisely spend their action points to gather equipment, fulfill missions, and use their special abilities while they travel the country and fight back the ever advancing menace before their land succumbs to darkness. Because it's one thing that an entire race of fictional characters that resides deep inside the heart of a mountain cannot handle its darkness. Regardless, this is a blend of strategy and eye candy that's intriguing to me, and I'm really looking forward to collaboratively rescuing some relics that belong in a museum, where they can eventually, inevitably, be stolen again which is the case in the next game, Museum Suspects, in which a team of highly skilled investigators have been called in to discover which of the 16 suspects they've assembled has stolen a priceless relic from the museum's gallery. In this deduction game that includes a bit of betting and bluffing, some clues that players will discover will be more valuable than others. So solving the case will require finding the best ones while obstructing everyone else's investigations, which will require covering your tracks while you compile crucial clues and zero in on the right suspect. Oh, but you gotta act fast, because the stakes are high and the culprit must be caught before they escape the museum. But for even higher stakes, there's Corrupt Bargain, the 1824 presidential election, in which up to four political parties do whatever it takes to help their candidate win the 1824 U.S. election and become the next president of the United States, which in real life was an inconclusive election as no candidate won a majority of the electoral vote, requiring the House of Representatives to hold an emergency contingency election, which, spoiler alert, John Quincy Adams won to become the sixth president of the United States. But history does not necessarily repeat itself in corrupt bargain, where with strategic alliances, campaigns, and backroom politics, players can change the outcome of the election and write an alternate history, perhaps one where the McRib is available all year round. The game is intended to require different strategies, depending on the number of players, while retaining rules that are simple to follow, but still offer a variety of different tactics that campaigners can employ. And along that same vein of a game that starts simple and then introduces new strategies and tactics is the one that tops my wish list this month, Risk Shadow Forces, a new legacy style game in which the rules, the board, and the components will all evolve and change over time concept that was first introduced in the original Risk Legacy from 2011. Now, if you haven't played a Legacy-style game, I think 
that risk is a really good one to start with. You, you'll make changes to the board, you'll put stickers on it, you'll reveal new rules and components, and they even permanently remove certain pieces, resulting in each copy of the game eventually becoming completely unique. And, personally, I have found that Risk is a simple enough game at its core that it serves as a really good foundation for the new rules and variations that you'll discover and build on top of that throughout the course of the Legacy campaign. And if our videos are an enjoyable way to discover and learn new games, well, then there'd be no risk at all in subscribing to the channel. But now, let's continue on from games worth wishing for to ones that are actually within reach in our next segment, What's in Store, where we check in on games that are actually on store shelves in search of some hidden gems. This episode, we're gonna travel down to the local mall to check out the Elephant's Trunk. Not a sponsor. The Elephant's Trunk is primarily a toy store, but it also carries a substantial selection of board games and puzzles. Oh, <laughs> so many puzzles. Seriously, there were literally puzzles stacked up floor to ceiling in this place. <laughs> so with the Elephant's Trunk's focus on toys and puzzles, will their board game selections stack up as well? Well, let's turn to their shelves and find out where first I found Dragon Realm, a card and dice driven game in which two to four adventurers sneak into a witch's cabin, search an ogre's treehouse, or storm a dragon's lair. In the game, players make sets of cards by color or number to roll dice to earn workers that they can then place at different locations. New locations are revealed as the game progresses, each one being worth a different value. Once a location is full, its value is scored, and then the player with the highest score has the grandest adventure, thereby winning the game. Next, there was Woodlands, a puzzly real-time tile placement game that transports players to a world of legends and fairy tales with four different stories of increasing difficulty. Each story consists of several chapters, each of which features a plastic overlay that depicts various collectibles, obstacles, and that chapter's goal. Now, each player then builds their own network of pathways on their personal playing board in an attempt to beat the chapter and score as many points as possible. There's also a little companion app available that can function as the game's timer. And while you're in the woodlands, you might as well set up a camp with the game Camp, which was another one on the shelves that I wasn't familiar with. This game aims to entertain families by integrating gameplay with facts about the great outdoors. For two to eight players, it includes 200 cards and is designed to grow with the player, starting with level one questions, primarily animal identification, and then progressing to higher level questions, such as possibly guessing that animal's favorite color. Now the game's press release boasts a vibrant color palette of earth tones, which I, I think may be actually the first time that I've ever heard of earth tones described that way. Regardless, the game incorporates full color photos, a variety of characters, and a Flenderson decoding matrix for revealing secretive answers to the questions. And it all comes packaged together in an effort to appeal to both children and adults on game night. And speaking of nights, the next game was Gnomes at Night, which features a pair of gnomes traversing a maze. In some versions of the game, named Minnow and Turi, the characters are aliens who have crashed on Earth and need to recover 12 items from a cornfield in order to repair their spaceship and then return home. But either way, players traverse four magnetic game boards that are placed vertically between them, trying not to lead their character out of bounds along the way. It looks like a really interesting use of both space and the theory of magnetism. And then there was Battlesheep, which I was really excited to see, which starts with a customizable map that players will divvy up as they spread their sheep out across it. Each player starts with a stack of discs in their color and moves them in straight lines to claim sections of territory. It's kind of a reverse, hey, that's my fish kind of game in some ways, sort of. Okay, it's, that is a terrible description, but it is still a terrific game that was a staple in our family when my daughter was younger. But even the excitement of seeing Battlesheep on the shelf could not compare to the absolute thrill that I felt when I made the surprise discovery of this set of Golden Girls themed dice. Truly, this discovery has restored some of my faith in mankind. Now, there's gonna be more games and possibly other sitcom themed game accessories from this and other store shelves in upcoming episodes, for now, we have our own golden opportunity to mention that the other game that helped sponsor this episode is Marvel Dice Throne from the Op. Just advertising position and go. 
In Marvel Dice Throne, you become one of Marvel's most famous heroes, including Black Panther, Captain Marvel, Black Widow, Scarlet Witch, Loki, Thor, Doctor Strange, and even Miles Morales' Spider-Man. Every Marvel Dice Throne hero has been painstakingly balanced and designed for the most thematic experience possible, while also featuring all new mechanisms and asymmetrical designs. It's the most innovative and exciting Dice Throne series yet. Attack your opponents and activate abilities by rolling your hero's unique dice. Then, accumulate combat points and spend them on cards that have a large range of effects, such as granting permanent hero upgrades. Marvel Dice Throne is available right now, this very instant, so follow the link in this video's description to find it at your friendly local game store and at the op.games. And now, I will configure into the next position for this month's best bets. Retail releases with either a proven track record, rave reviews, or both. If you're looking for a new hobby board game, then, well, in my opinion, any one of the following is worth looking into. Our swath of hot shot props slotted into our top spots begins this month with Northgard Uncharted Lands, a streamlined 4X board game based on the video game of the same name. Now, in it, Various Viking clans compete, survive, thrive, and gain glory using a streamlined set of rules and mechanisms allowing for a fast-paced and smooth rhythm of play. Each turn, players alternate their actions to adapt their strategies to their opponent's moves and the expansion of the board, and choose a new card to improve their personal deck as their clans develop new tactics and technologies. As with its digital counterpart, there's a winter phase, which makes it a especially challenging to keep one's village happy and alive, but doing so will lead a clan to victory after a set number of rounds, or once they control three territories containing certain buildings, creating a wonderful kingdom. Perhaps as wonderful as the one players could construct in this month's next best bet, It's a Wonderful Kingdom, a one to two player game inspired by its predecessor, It's a Wonderful World. This new kingdom version offers more interaction, a bluff mechanism, and new challenges to overcome. The game also includes elements of betting and bluffing, an I split, you choose mechanism, and various modules that can be included in the game session, each of which introduces different twists. And in one final twist, the player that ends the game with the most victory points wins. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at all if more games started doing that too in the future. And we may soon find out because the future is now with Cosmic Encounter Cosmic Odyssey, the seventh expansion for the groundbreaking game of negotiation and deliberation set in a far off future of alien worlds. This is being touted as Cosmic Encounter's biggest expansion yet, introducing a campaign mode, 30 new aliens, 12 alternate timeline aliens, which revise previous ones, plus new space stations, technologies, hazards, and adds several new features such as moons into the mix. So if you're a fan of the sometimes cooperative, but often cutthroat game Cosmic Encounter, then this is definitely an expansion to consider. Or if you'd rather just go full cooperative, Then there's the Viticulture World Cooperative Expansion, which introduces a fully collaborative mode of the game. Using a new game board, and tiles, tokens, and event cards, combined with the vineyard mats and game cards from the base game, which is also required, players will have six rounds to achieve the two conditions necessary for victory in a selected region. Together, players will need to balance the management of their individual vineyards with the combined effort of their fellow players in order to accomplish their shared goals and claim mutual victory. But if neither negotiation nor cooperation is for you, and you'd rather just embrace your inner scoundrel instead, well then Star Wars Villainous Power of the Dark Side may just be the power trip for you. In this version of Villainous, Darth Vader, Asajj Ventress, Kylo Ren, Moff Gideon, and Gentle, Gre Gentle, Gentle Grievous, Gentle General Grievous, Kylo Ren, Moff Gideon, and Gentle General Gen Gentle Gen... That's not even in the script. Kylo Ren, Moff Gideon, and General Grievous clash as each competes to reshape the galaxy in their own image. Much of this game plays the same as other games in the Villainous line, with cards, a player board, a fate deck, and individual win conditions, but this version also introduces ambition, which can be used to perform special abilities, villain-specific missions, and ships and transports from all corners of the Star Wars galaxy, which all combine 
designed to really put the heat on your opponents. And to keep that heat rising, continue on to the latest Momentum episode where we're counting down this month's hottest board games that are all burning up the charts, or check out any Watch It Play's other informative instructional videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you over there.